Hello and welcome to Pixarize's second image on the American Revolution. Our previous image focused on the events leading up to the war, whereas this image focuses mainly on the war itself. If you're anything like me, the first thing you should notice is the giant carousel. The carousel is meant to stand for the word revolution, because carousels revolve around and around. This serves as the scene's anchor. When remembering the American Revolution, this revolving carousel should be the first thing that comes to mind. With the anchor set, let's jump right in. First, we'll focus on the events that happened right before the war. These events are represented by the kids in line waiting to get on the carousel. First, notice the two kids monkeying around in gorilla suits. These two kids are really putting the Kong back in Congress and are there to help you remember the two Continental Congresses. The Continental Congresses were two groups that met to protest the British Parliament. After the Second Continental Congress, the colonists prepared for war and declared George Washington Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army. Next, take a look at the sad little kid who is not allowed to get on the carousel. He can't get on the ride because he's carrying an olive branch, and the carousel company won't let anyone bring dangerous branches onto the ride. The older kid who works for the carousel company is dressed as a king, because that's their mascot. Or at least, that's why I assume he's dressed up. Maybe he just likes wearing king outfits? Anyway, these two symbols are to help you remember the Olive Branch Petition, which was the colonists' last-ditch effort to reconcile with King George III. An olive branch is a symbol for peace, but this carousel worker simply won't allow any olive branches near his ride. Before we actually get on the ride, we have to look at a few more characters. Take a look at the little kid who is licking the globe. The word licks should help you remember the word Lexington, which you should remember as Lexington. This stands for the Battle of Lexington, which is where the first gunshot of the Revolutionary War was fired. This gunshot was known as the shot heard around the world, which is why this kid is licking a globe. Nobody knows who fired first, which is why this kid is wearing a gray shirt as opposed to one that's blue or red. Also, notice that he is standing behind a red cord. This should help you remember the Battle of Concord, which occurred shortly after the Battle of Lexington. These two battles, the Battle of Lexington and Concord, are considered the first battles of the American Revolution. Next, take a look at the kid who is squirting the girl with a water gun. He is standing under a big clock to help you remember the word Minutemen. Also, Notice that the girl he is squirting has a toy horse in her hand. This is to remind you of Paul Revere, who was trying to warn the colonists of the attacking British. The girl is holding the horse because Paul Revere was captured in his famous ride. Despite being captured, the Minutemen were able to assemble, within minutes, and defend Lexington. Now we'll take a look at the carousel itself. First, look at the Volunteers Needed sign next to the guy dressed as the king. They clearly don't pay him enough for this job, as they need to bring on additional volunteers to help run the carousel. This is to remind you that the Continental Army was made up of volunteers, not professional soldiers. Next, take a look at George Washington on his horse. His horse is crossing over a river painted on the carousel, which should help you remember George Washington crossing the Delaware. Next to him is a prince on a train which should help you remember that Washington won battles at Princeton and Trenton after crossing the Delaware. Also, take a look at the kid who is vandalizing Washington's horse. He is using a marker and laughing, which should help you remember Marquise de Lafayette. He was a French aristocrat who served as Washington's aide during the war, and was like a son to him. He is the first famous foreigner you should remember. Next, look at the kid dressed up in a toga, which should remind you of the Battle of Saratoga. What is this? Costume night at the carousel? Just as this toga-wearing kid is at the turning point of the carousel, the Battle of Saratoga was the turning point of the American Revolution. After the Battle of Saratoga, the colonists received French aid, which is why our toga kid is eating French fries. And if you look closely, you'll notice that the fry he is chewing on is shaped like artillery. This is to remind you of our second famous foreigner, Thaddeus Kosciusko who moved artillery to high ground at the Battle of Saratoga. This kid is chewing on artillery to remind you of the word Kozchusko and his role at the Battle of Saratoga. Get it? Kozchusko? Chew? Chusko? Whatever. 
If you think that mnemonic's good, just wait for this next one. We now see this vaguely German-looking guy riding on a polar bear. The polar bear symbolizes winter, and it's stepping on an anvil. This stands for Valley Forge, which is where Washington trained his troops during winter. The vaguely German-looking guy is our third and final famous foreigner, Baron von Steuben. Get it? Bear un von Steuben? That's why there's a hot bowl of stew behind him. And you thought the Kosciuszko mnemonic was good. Next, we have this cute little Yorkie dog jumping off the carousel. It's jumping off the carousel to symbolize the end of the war, which happened at the Battle of Yorktown, hence the Yorkie dog. There's a big wall of corn behind him, because General Cornwallis surrendered his army at Yorktown. Now we'll tackle the question on everyone's mind. Why is the dog jumping off the carousel? To chase a cat, of course. I don't know if you are superstitious at all, but black cats are considered unlucky, just like the unlucky number 13. A black cat is a recurring symbol for the number 13, and it should help you remember that the 13 colonies became 13 states after the war. This happened as a result of the Treaty of Paris, which is represented by the Eiffel Tower in the background. There's a river running under the tower, which should help you remember that the Treaty of Paris also helped the U.S. secure additional land east of the Mississippi. Before we finish up this image, we have to tie up a few loose ends. First, take a look at the sky and all of the beautiful fireworks. This is to remind you of the Declaration of Independence, which happened on the 4th of July. The Declaration of Independence was inspired by John Locke and his Enlightenment ideas. That's why there's a big lock at the top of the carousel. Also, there are three alien spaceships up in the sky. This is to help you remember the idea of the three unalienable rights. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These Enlightenment ideas heavily influenced the Declaration of Independence. Next, take a look at the other sign on the side of the carousel. The sign reads, Come to Foreign Night, to help you remember the different types of foreign aid the colonists got during the Revolution. First, notice that the guy in the picture is a Spanish matador. This is to help you remember Spain. Next, notice he is holding French fries, which stands for, you guessed it, France. Finally, notice that he has a net instead of the traditional matador cape. The net stands for the Netherlands, which you can remember as the Netherlands net. Putting it all together, the colonists received aid from Spain, France, and the Netherlands. Now for our final symbol, the mother and her baby. This is to remind you of the idea of Republican motherhood, which is the idea that women should become educated and pass on the ideas of the revolution to their children. This way, future generations will become good citizens and carry on the values of republicanism. And that's it for the American Revolution. There's a lot of good, juicy, mnemonic goodness here, but don't you worry, we've got plenty more in store. On to the next image.